Hey guitar fanatics, in this video I'm going to show you a couple of great exercises that will allow you to start playing solos that outline chord changes. We'll learn how to target the notes that really matter and it's going to take your guitar solos to an entirely different level. My name is Charlie Long, welcome to the channel, let's play some guitar. So the idea of playing over chord changes is something we hear a lot about and I've done several videos on how to use triads and seventh arpeggios to outline chords. This is something that's necessary in the jazz world due to the complexity of many jazz tunes, but it's also something that applies to pop, rock, country, and even blues. The players who are most appealing to me, the ones whose solos sound the sweetest and most coherent, are the ones that play in such a way that even if the chords weren't there, you could still hear the progression in their licks and phrases. As I mentioned, I've done lessons giving you lots of exercises on how to use arpeggios and non-chord tones. But what I want to do today, in addition to exercises, is go through a couple of classic chord progressions and show you how to put this stuff to practical use. So let's get into an exercise first, and then we're going to apply it to a couple of tunes. So in our first exercise, we're going to target the notes that really give the chord the bulk of its sound or its identity. And those notes that we're going to target are the root and the third. So let's take a simple chord progression to get started. We're going to use Let It Be by the Beatles. We're going to concentrate on four bars from the verse, and the chords that we've got are C, G, A minor, F. And that repeats for the first, the third bar anyway, and then we're going to have F, E minor, D minor, and C. So going through the chords real quickly, we've got C as our root, and E, that's for the C chord, dropping down to the G chord, we've got G as the root, and a B as the third. Going to A minor, we've got A as the root, and C as our minor third. Dropping down to F, we've got F, as our root and major third. When we get to that last bar, obviously we've got that descending passage with F, E minor, D minor, and C. With E minor, we've got E and G. With D minor, we've got D and F, and then we're back to C. So let's play just the root and the major third through the changes a couple of times and get comfortable with that. Okay, so we are literally playing notes that are a third interval apart, and it sounds okay. I can hear the chords there. The notes are kind of close together, but I think you can hear the essence of the chords. Here's a really cool trick that I think sounds even better. We're going to take the root and the third, and we're going to invert them. We're going to flip them. So we're still going to be playing the root and the third, but we're going to play the third first and then the root. So even though it's the same notes, because of the order we're playing them in, it's now a sixth interval apart. Check it out, with our C chord, we've got E that we play first, and then going all the way up to the C note, you can hear how we're six notes apart. And that wider interval, it sounds so sweet. So check this out, we've got our C chord, we're gonna play E, and then C with our G chord, we're gonna have a B and D, with A minor, we've got C, and then A. With our F, we've got F, A, and then F. We repeat that. And then with our F, E minor, D minor, back to C, descending sequence. There's our A and F, G and E, F, D, E and C. So that's our first exercise and our first variation. We started out playing thirds, now we're playing sixths. 
Let's listen to that over the backing track. So let's try this with a little more complex chord progression. Let's do a simple version of the classic R&B song Sunny from the 1960s, which was revived some years back by the uber guitarist Greg Howe when he put a video on YouTube that went viral improvising like a madman over the Sunny changes. And for a while it seemed like any guitarist that had a little bit of chops was posting videos improvising over Sunny. Anyway, it's a cool progression. We're going to play an A minor and we're going to do eight bars and the chords are as follows. We've got A minor 7, G minor 7, C7, F major 7, B half diminished, and E7, and then we repeat that. So if we go through those changes using the root and third A minor, we've got A and C. G minor, we've got G and B flat, C7, we're going to have C and E, F major 7, we're going to have F and A, B minor 7 flat 5, we're going to have B and D, E7, we've got E and G sharp. So we'll play through that, we'll hear the chords. Okay, so now let's do our trick where we flip the intervals. We're going to play the third first. Over the A minor, we would have C and A. G minor, we got B flat and G. Over our C, we're going to have E and C. With our F, we're going to have A and F. With our B half diminished, we're going to have D and B. And then we're going to have G sharp and E. Let's do that over the backing track. You'll really be able to hear these chord tones pop out. So moving on to our exercise number two, we're going to use a technique that was made famous by Eric Johnson. And this technique is called spread triads. So we're going to bring the fifth interval into play now. And the way we do a spread triad, we're going to play the root. We're going to skip over the third and go to the fifth. And then we're going to jump up to the third but we're gonna play it an octave above where it would normally be. So with A minor, we've got A, our fifth is E, and our third is C. And so we could revisit the progression to let it be, and with using spread triad C chord, we've got C, G, and E. With our G chord, we've got G, D is our fifth, and then B. A minor, we're going to have A, E, and C. With our F, we're going to have F, C, and A. Back to C, G. Then we've got our F. E minor, we would have E, B, and G. D minor, we would have D, A, and then F, and then we're back to C. Let's hear that over the backing track.
just sounds really nice. I hope you can hear the chord changes as plain as day. Now let's apply the spread triads to the first few bars of Sunny. We got A minor again, so we've got A, E and C, G minor, we've got G, D, B flat with our C, we've got C, G and E. Jumping up to F, we've got F, C, and A. Now we've got B half diminished, it's a little different. We're gonna have B, F, and D. Then we go to our E7, we've got E, B, and G sharp. So how about a more melodic variation on the spread triad theme? I wanna show you how once you're targeting the really important notes, how easy it is to add a couple more notes that maybe aren't in the chord and make your lines start to sound so much more musical and melodic. Let's make just one small change to our spread triad. We're gonna play the spread triad up to the third, but then we're gonna play the fourth and then back to the third. This one added note from outside the chord is gonna be enough to add some movement and melodicism to the sound. So take a listen over the sunny chords. Starting off with A minor, we play A, E, C, but then we're gonna go up to D and then back to C. G, we've got G, D, B flat, up to C and then back to B flat. With our C chord, we've got C, G, F and back to E. With our F major seven, we've got F, C, A, B flat. Over our B half diminished, we're gonna have B, F, D, E and back to D. And then over our E seven, we've got E, B, G sharp, A and back to G. Let's hear that over the backing track. Okay, we're gonna do one more variation on a spread triad, and we're gonna make one small change. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play the spread triad, but when we get to the third, we're gonna play up the fourth and the fifth. So A minor, we'd have A, E, C, D, and then we're back to the fifth, an octave above the original fifth we played. G minor seven, C seven, F major seven, B minor seven flat five, E seven. Let's listen to that one over a backing track. So now, in addition to hearing the chords go by, we're starting to create melodies over each chord. And that's just one possibility. If you apply a little creativity, you could go on and on and on. You can start connecting your thirds, your sixths, and your arpeggios to the pentatonic scales, to the modes, or you could just continue coming up with little melodic patterns based on the things we've learned today to find your way around the fretboard. The beautiful thing about this way of playing is I'm not thinking about scales or modes. I'm simply outlining the important notes of the chords and using my ear and my imagination to create little melodies. And as you practice this stuff and your ear develops, the better the melodies that you create will become. As always, thanks for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be seeing you soon. And until then, happy guitar playing.